Okay, welcome to this uh, small lecture about Shohen Bonsai. And I think if some of you can come closer, so I don't have to shout that high. It's a little bit uh, an introduction about Shohen Bonsai. And uh, the Shohen Bonsai is just a classification of trees. That's the size of it. And uh, the normal rule is that when you measure a tree like this, from uh, the rim of the pot to the top of the tree, it has to be a maximum of 20 centimeters. And that's uh, the guideline or the rule you have when you exhibit Shohan bonsai. If you have a gin that goes a little higher, that's not a problem. It doesn't have to be that rigidly or taken that seriously. As long as they fit in the racks that you can see in the display area in there, that will be fine if there's space enough around it. So showing bonsai, the word, the Japanese, is just a little thing. So it means you should be able to hold it in one hand and has this uh, kind of light feeling of it, that it's not a heavy tree, it's something small. That's the meaning of it. And you can have uh, even smaller trees like this one, that is a maximum of 10 centimeters. That's what we call a beam bonsai, a mame bonsai. That's another classification, but everything is actually shohin. And the way I grow shohin, you, you can buy them from Japan and put them in a rack in these sizes, but I, I prefer to make my own trees. And everything you see here is something uh, I have made from ordinary garden trees or something I have found in, in my own garden. Some, you can also do them from uh, seedlings or from cuttings, but it will, of course, take a longer time. But this is found in a normal garden center. It has been a normal bush, and my method is often I find something that has the volume in the trunk, and then I cut it back and build it up again. And I have an example. This is an European view that originally was a large bush like this one. So it has been around up to here, approximately. And then I have cut it back completely. I begin to restyle it, and you can see here, at first I started with a tree in this size, with branches out here, and then I slowly work it back and, and down in size. And that is a really good method to make something small. You start with something big and then you decrease it over time. The same with the roots, having them in a larger pot so they have room enough to grow to get the strength. And then you decrease the roots when you repot it. You have to do that slowly. And it is important to start with more roots than branches. So you have enough support for new growth. So it is not about taking this huge tree and immediately cut it back to the size because then you risk to lose it. You have to do it step by step, little by little. And it has taken me about 12 years to reach this point. And actually this tree has passed the point where it was good at a time because it was well grown. It has really good proportions and now I'm beginning to rebuild it because uh, as a difference to the huge bonsai you see around, they will last for many years where you can cut them a little and keep them in the same shape. But when you have a showhin, it outgrows its shapes much faster. And then you have to rebuild something. So the reason why there's uh, a lot of air around here now is because I'm beginning to rebuild it. I'm beginning to lower some branches. I have cut out some of the growth here because it simply became too dense. And when it becomes too dense, I shut out the light from the inside and we'll just get a bush that gets bigger and bigger if you don't do anything to rejuvenize it, to get it growing again. So the trick is always to take what is growing at the outside, cut it back and open so you can have new growth in here to replace this. So it's always about replacing what has been growing at the outside. And right now I have a little less growth. If you take a look at it from this side, I have not so much growth here and I have a lot of growth up here. So what I'm doing 
during the next two years is that I will prune this harder and this, let this be a little more. It's very much about uh, placing the energy in the right places. And the top of the tree and the, the longest part of the tree will always grow stronger than the inner parts and the lower parts. There's always a balance that you are pruning it harder the part that grows the strongest so you have a balance in the tree. If I just let this part be strong all the time and I cut this as much here, I will weaken these branches over time and they will risk to die back or I will just have an unbalanced tree that looks very good here and not here. So the next thing I have to do, but that is a spring job and a summer job, is I have to prune this and take the tips here and then let you grow free places so I get a tree that is evenly balanced. <coughs> As you can see at this, it is more evenly balanced all over. So the trick is really to take care of looking at the energy in each branch and knowing your tree. I think that uh, when you compare to the Japanese way of displaying Shohin bonsai, I think you should take a round at the, the far side in here and look at many of these trees are Japanese. And what you often see at the Shohin uh, exhibitions is that the top tree is a Japanese black pine. And that is a tradition they have in Japan to use this tree. It's a part of the culture and they look at this tree as a, a very strong tree. And when you're doing a showing display, the top tree placed on top of the rack has to be a strong and a calm tree when you do the traditional rack. And there's a lot of talk about how you make a showing display and we can talk about that for weeks. But we, if you take the basic, the top tree has to be the strongest tree and as a binary tree you always choose a tree that has the seasonal approach. Everything about showing bonsai is about seasonal approach. If you compare showing bonsai to larger bonsai, the large bonsai is about displaying one bonsai and the beauty of this, how it is growing and expressing that. When you are looking at showing bonsai, you are looking at a landscape. You are looking at at least two trees or more that represents a scenery. This means if you have a conifer as a top tree, you will need a deciduous tree or a flowering tree or a tree with fruits to express the season. And uh, this time it is winter, so it would be very natural to take a deciduous tree to place here that has lost the leaves to show the winter expression. You can use trees with berries to add some color, or you can use uh, different trees that have the seasonal approach. Well, this one is not very seasonal, but it has a calm feeling, and this tree shows the seasonal feeling. When you are displaying showing bonsai together, it's very important that you have different kinds of trees and different kinds of pots, so you have a variety, and they have to be in some sort of uh, in a combination that looks harmoniously and peaceful. So it's, if you're using a very expressive pot, besides a very calm tree, it can be disturbing. But all of this is uh, about personal taste, not something you can put any kind of rule into. It is about the feeling when you're looking at it. And the direction of the trees is the second thing. You have to have trees that point together when you put them into a display. And uh, when you're looking for trees for showing, <coughs> One of, one of the things you can happen to do is that you choose a lot of trees with the same movement to the same side. Then you have a problem when you want to make a display because you want to connect the trees so they point together. So it's not only about finding different trees that have different expressions, that have berries or flowers. It also is something that you can display together in a display at once. And it is uh, extremely easy just to go into an exhibition, begin to criticize it and say, okay, this doesn't fit with that, and I don't like the direction of this part, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. But you have to know you have 
you have to have enough trees to choke them on. So it's not enough to have five trees to make a, a showing display. You maybe need 50 trees to choose from to make the display. Because you need it to be timed right with the flowering and the trees have to be in top condition at the time you want to display them. And all of this has to be at the same time. And if you look at my trees here, some of them are in the training stage. You can see there's wire on, so I cannot display this tree. So if I wanted to display a tree with this one, if you say this was finished and ready, I have to find a tree in the same quality and the same size at the same stage. And that makes showing bonsai a little bit difficult. It's far more easy to find a bonsai and say, okay, this one is ready, I don't need anything else for the showing. It's the trick to find something that goes at the same time. So the timing is essential. The great thing about showing is that you can make these in a lot shorter time yourself in, than if you have to find a huge tree and form that over 20 or 30 years to be in top condition. You can find a very raw material and maybe in 5 or 10 years you have something good because the volume is just smaller and you need to develop fewer branches. But as I said in the start, we will also outgrow their form faster. You have to take care of that. The Shohin display is what is the top of Shohin. It is uh, nice to have them in the garden and look at them, of course, but in the end it is about displaying them together and find this combination of trees that makes a beautiful display and with this seasonal approach. Another great thing is about showing bonsai compared to larger bonsai is that you have so much more material available that you can use because it's far more easy to find something that has a trunk size that fits with the size of the bonsai that's much more simple material like, like the Coton Aster here, the Coton Aster Mercophila. You will never get a huge trunk from this one. You will never get it up to a large bonsai. It will be, you have to find something that is very old. Maybe you can find a thick trunk and be lucky to make a medium size. But for a Shohin size tree, you, you just need a trunk like a thumb size. And then you can build a tree from that. So it's far more easy to find different material to use for Shohin bonsai this way. And if we compare the raw material I use to build, now this has pa passed the point where it was good and now I'm rebuilding it. But it starts something like this. This has been a training for two years. It has been cut back. There has been some long branches here. I've just cut it back and now I'm rebuilding it. And this is exactly the same specimen, just different stages. So this, this has passed its point and this is just on the way. And, what, and you can see the needle size, if you compare that, these are much longer and these are much shorter. And some of that you can train by, you can cut some of the branches back, you can remove from it some of the needles. I do that in the late spring to early summer. I would do it now just for the example, but it's the wrong time to do it. Simply to get new back body. I take some of these needles and drag them off and keep a length piece out here. This piece I will keep to keep some strength and some growth. And at here, this point it will begin to set new buds during autumn and winter the following year. But what you have to take care of when you take them off at the European U, you have to drag them in the growth direction because if I peel them back here, I will tear up the tissue and will begin to dry out the branch. So that's important. But that's one way to get it to set new leaves here. And at the start there was nothing in here. Everything was out here. So I have decreased it slowly and now I begin to reduce it. Let some of these branches grow to thicken. And in 10 years time maybe I will have something that looks like this and be much denser. But one of the things that make needles shorter and uh, foliage smaller at trees, also at larger bonsai, but especially at showing, 
that is time. The first years of the growth of this, the needle length was strong and long, and with time it decreases. And that happens when the root system in here becomes denser and denser. Every time you repot and begin to uh, cut the roots and regrow the new finer roots, that will influence on this. So th this is not a sign of weakness. It's just a sign of the root ball becoming so compact and uh, fine, and that will be reflected up here. The more small branches you have, the smaller the leaves will be. <laughs> and that goes with any kind of, of, of bonsai, that time will help you. And the most important thing when we're talking about roots, when you recut many trees, you will have a lot of roots uh, around the rim of the pot at the outside of the pot and not very not so many roots at the center but what you have to develop is center roots just underneath the trunk because when you get that then you have a density of roots and a distribution of roots that will begin to set finer branches and a finer structure up here so you have to like you have to cut the top of the tree harder and the outside of the tree harder, you have to do the same with the roots, decrease them from the outside and begin to develop the inner parts. So when repotting, it's important to let more roots stay alive in here, be very more gentle to these than to the outside. So you, when you have a compact root ball from everywhere, then you begin to get the fine branch and, and the final leaves and the final leaves. And uh, the European U, in my opinion, and that was what I was talking about when we were talking about uh, seeing this Japanese black pine always on the top of the shelf, I would like to see more use because, in my opinion, it has the same strength, the, the same expression as the black pine here. And I would like to see, in general, much more European trees at the show display. I can see a lot of imported trees. But I will encourage everybody to try to do their own bonsai because it's far more easy than you're, when you're growing a big tree. It's easier to find material and it's far more easy to grow them. Question? Can you tell about fertilizing? So, fertilizing. Fertilizing. Question of fertilizer. Well, I use organic fertilizers. Uh, and um, one of my friends, he wants to do chemical fertilizers, but in my opinion, it is more gentle to the tree. And chemical fertilizers have a tendency to uh, ruin the soil structure. It breaks down faster. So I'm using fertilizers. It can, can be a bio gold or whatever, if, as long as you have a balanced fertilizer. In comparison with uh, larger trees, I, I put fertilizers on later than I would do with larger trees. And that is simply because if you start up the growth too early, you will get very long shoots. It will be too strong growing. And what we want in showing is a very, very compact tree. So I do not put fertilizers on before, after the first growth has begun to harden off. Because then I keep the tree back in growth and when the first uh, growth has hardened off then I get, give it fertilizers to give it strength but then it will not push out a lot of long growth that's just important and the same that goes also with deciduous trees you have to cut them back after they have set the first pair of leaves and then begin to reduce it but not give it fertilizer before before if you put fertilizers on just in spring, then you will get very long shoots, they have to cut back, and you have difficult to, to reach these very fine, dense ramifications that are important. Was that it? Yeah. And I, I give them fertilizer twice a year. I start in the spring after the trees have developed leaves or the new uh, shoots have hardened off. Then they get uh, fertilizer, and then I stop during uh, the midsummer, they need a break because trees need a break during summer. Because of the heat, they will not push out a lot of leaves and they, they have a semi-dormant period. Simply because they have, if they have too many leaves, they will have to use too much water and energy just to stay alive because they transpire a lot at that time. And then after that period, 
end of the middle of July and up to September I feed again and then I stop so they will harden off and, and go back to dormancy to winter. Yeah. What, what tips do you have for picking fertilizers? You haven't got much room no. for the normal fertilizer. Do you use uh, uh, foliar fertilizers? I do not. Uh, that's a question about uh, fertilizing and foliar fertilizing. I do not do that because I'm, I'm able to push in a little uh, organic fertilizers around the tree and it will stay there. That's enough because they don't need a lot of fertilizing. They, they need to be healthy growing, of course, but a lot of fertilizing is not what we need. We need to keep them compact. And there's, of course, a difference uh, in what stage are we in. If you just put fertilizers on uh, the same way, not, not taking into consideration what do you want from it, that is a problem. This is an established tree that just needs a fine uh, growth for the future, so I will keep the fertilizers at a minimum with a tree like this. If I have a very young tree that I need a lot of speedy growth, I need to let it backward a lot, I will feed it much more. That's also different, always thinking about what is the purpose of what we're doing, what time are we doing that, and not just do the same thing to all trees. It very much depends on the stage we're in. Uh, the, the great thing about showing that you have to take care about is of course what makes it more difficult than larger trees is the watering situation. Because a tree like this with that kind of volume will dry out very fast. You can have a large tree with a lot of leaves but still you have a, a bigger volume that will not transpire as fast. So I water maybe once or twice a day, depending on the season of course. And one time in the morning and one time in the afternoon, and we had a very hot summer last year. I placed the trees in a tray with a little bit of gravel and water underneath to help it transpire. If, and if it is really hot, I make it uh, be in contact with water just at the top so they can drag up a little water. So that's the most tricky part about showing that is actually keeping them uh, healthy with enough water. Where larger trees can cook much more. And uh, in winter time they are put aside in a, a cold frame. They, they can easily to tolerate freezing, but the problem is if you have wind or sun at it, they will still transpire and e even trees without leaves will have a little bit of transpiration and a pot like that will be frozen within an hour or two and they will not be able to drag up any water. So that, therefore you have to take care of them being stored inside where there's no wind that can take up that will make them transpire too much. Larger trees you can maybe have outside for a longer time period. Yep. Yeah. Thank you.